a loving woman and a funny woman. Give her a nice round of applause, Daniela Loza. what I can kind of see or kind of hear because you guys were laughing at some jokes. You're all drinking alcohol. <laughs> I'm uh, personally more of a coffee person myself. I don't know about you guys, but uh, it's actually quite cute. Thanks to coffee, I developed this very intimate relationship with my bathroom. <laughs> and I don't know if I'm the only one, but Am I the only one who uses the restroom to escape responsibilities? <laughs> you know, you just go and pretend that, like you're gonna use the bathroom so that you don't have to fold that pile of clothes sitting on your bed. That's probably not gonna get folded anyway. <laughs> just transferred to the chair. <laughs> this, this is the first time something's as tall as, it's kinda weird. Um, so, uh, Sometimes I'll just sit there long after I'm done, just so that I don't have to adult. I don't want to adult, I just much rather sit on my phone, literally, well not on my phone, but sit, on, sit and look at my phone. And it's, it's a beautiful day and age where you can just take the internet with you to the bathroom, really. Long gone are the days of licking at your shampoo bottle and reading the same ingredients that's in all of them, surprisingly, no matter what it is. But um, it's what I do with my me time in there. Just uh, go on Instagram, look at pictures of cute puppies, look at your selfies, your food. That's how I decide when I'm gonna eat to lunch while I'm in there, honestly. Like, I'm just sitting there like, oh, that looks really, really good. Tap, 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 tap. That's how you like stuff on Instagram, I found out this year. Tap, tap. But um, it's not our fault, really. It's not our fault that we get those red spots right here from sitting in there too long. It's the internet's fault. It's so interesting. In fact, and this is kind of a embarrassing to admit from my parents, but uh, it's not just for porn anymore, the internet. It's not. <laughs> in 2015, really, like, you don't even need a doctor or a psychologist when you have Google and WebMD. Like, successfully, I myself have diagnosed myself with seasonal allergies, strep throat, and mild schizophrenia, but it's okay, no, no biggie, no biggie. It's, I can find an online doctor for that, really. And, uh, you know, speaking of WebMD, you guys might be familiar, um, I found out that a lot of my friends actually suffer from dipsomania. And that's a real thing, I know it sounds crazy, but it's a real thing. It is the uncontrollable desire for alcohol. And here I was thinking they were all just fucking alcoholics. But the internet, it's there for you. It turns out that when you suffer from dipsomania, Dipsomania, I can't even pronounce it. I'll probably have to go online and figure that out. But uh, with dipsomania comes other related illnesses like chronic dipshitosis and a serious case of dipshititis. Or as, as non-medical folk know it, just being a dipshit. <laughs> but um, speaking of things that are just completely out of your control, do you ever just like look at a person and they look mad, and you're not sure why, and they're not, they're probably not. That's just their face. They look unapproachable for no reason. You're like, oh, maybe not. But let me tell you guys, resting nice face, that's the real bitch. <laughs> when you have resting nice face, you can say goodbye to your personal space wherever you are. The bus stop, at a bar, at a coffee table, people would just sit next to you. When you have resting nice face, it is the number one Jehovah's Witness magnet. <laughs> they just swore me with pamphlets because you look approachable. And 
for some reason, almost the worst of them all, people just have this notion that you know where you're going. They'll just ask you for directions as opposed to, I don't know, Google Maps, maybe? But the worst. Old people. Oh, I'm not a grandma hater, first of all. I love me some grandmas. Your grandma, your grandma. Bring them all, I love grandmas. However, something about this face screams, please stop me. Talk to me for like 20 minutes as I'm running late. <laughs> My landlord, she is the perfect example of this. She's sweet as apple pie, but she must be like 100 years old. So when she sees me, she's like, young blood, I want to talk to her. And I just turn around and I just go straight to my bathroom. <laughs> just go. But it's not all bad with resting nice face. It's uh, thanks to that that I got my first and current job. You might have heard of it. It's like a small little bird joint by the name of in and out <laughs> But uh, not everybody likes it apparently. Some guy is actually trying to sue in and out because an employee allegedly put methamphetamine pills in his chocolate shake. Yeah. I was gonna say a true story, but it's not, you know, I'm just saying like, allegedly. First of all, no. No, that was a bomb ass shake, let me tell you. That shit was delicious. And you were just on a sugar high with like all thousand calories in there. <laughs> Second of all, do you see how hard we work in there? Honestly, you don't think if we had any meth, we'd be in the back just doing it ourselves real quick? <laughs> all seriousness. <laughs> I'm just kidding, <laughs> I don't do math. But uh, <laughs> you know how it's so, I know it is a frivolous lawsuit. It's because if it were true, they would have found cocaine. We get paid well above minimum wage. We, we, don't, have to, <laughs> we don't have to go there. But um, <laughs> my husband, he doesn't like my driving. <laughs> I know you're thinking like, oh, typical, she probably does her makeup in the car or something, but, <laughs> which I do, but just a little bit, just a little, some foundation, a little highlighting, some blush, mascara, the essentials, the basics. But guys, guys, well, n yeah, guys now too. Guys and girls, do not do your eyebrows in the car. That takes precision. Instead, use that you time to catch up on some light, you're reading, you know, get educated. It's not just all about your face all the time. But I'm serious, guys. Don't. Not the eyebrows in the car. One wrong pothole. Bloop! You end up looking confused the rest of the day. Or even worse, with resting bitch face. I can't even do it, but just resting bitch face. All right, guys, thank you. If you need me, I'll be in the restroom. How are you guys doing? Yeah. Okay, good. Great to have you in the I'm so happy to be here. Can't see any of you, but you know, it's cool. Hey, you know what? I'm, I'm half uh, Mexican and half Filipino, you know? Woo! Yeah, that's cool. Woo! Hey, I don't, I, don't, I know what you're thinking. Car thieves that can't drive. All right. All right. Hey, hey. Now, before I start, I want to dispel from rumors a few stereotypes, you know? Of, Hispanics, you know? You know, like you hear, all Mexicans carry knives. No, that's not true. No, not, not all of us. You know, just some of us. Uh, Mexicans are kind of lazy, you know? Not, not true, not true. You know? uh, Latinos make great lovers. Okay, some things are true. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You know, but when you're Hispanic or Filipino, you just cannot get a big hit in your family. Your parents, your family won't let you, right? 
I'll tell you, you know, I, 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 I get my degree, go well, four years of college, get my degree, get my BA. I'm, I'm all excited. I run home and tell my aunt, hey, look, look, I got my BA. My aunt says, yeah, I've had a BA all my life, big ass. <laughs> you know, hey, uh, let me see, I gotta make sure I'm in the right place here. <laughs> Lancey, Jimmy and Lancey on TV. Yeah. You know that old show where, where you go, uh, the, the, old, the old days when, when the Jimmy and Lancey, they get lost and go out in the forest and go fight bears for a couple of weeks and animals and stuff. And they come home and they get, they get uh, milk and cookies, you know, Bob's all, oh, hug and kiss and milk and cookies, you know. Me and my brothers, you know, we were kind of told keen watching this show and, you know, hey, milk and cookies, cool, you know. So we take it off, you know. <laughs> We're gone for like two hours, we come back and my mom, she gets a strap out and beats the shit out of me. Mom, what happened? Did you watch the show? You know? She says, well, you didn't, you know, you, were, you, you didn't take, you were out there fighting bears, you were out there smoking my weed, you know? So, <laughs> and her answer to everything was ass whipping anyway, you know? His bad parents are like that, you know? They, they, you know, Get the strap off her. I remember my brother saying, uh, Mom, it's a free world. I can say whatever I want. But it's a free world? Well, here's a free ass we can make. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but I gotta admit, sometimes that did work. Sometimes it didn't, you know. I, I, you know, I had a thing about my glasses when I was a kid, so I get my hands, so I put them away somewhere. Mike, where's your glasses at? Uh, uh, I don't know, Mom, I forgot where I put them. She, she'd come out with this strap and came back and said, Will this help you remember? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I found it in two seconds. You know? I thought, oh, there it is now. And the other time, she was, uh, the time it didn't work was, you know, the school calls up. You know, I went to a Catholic school here in, here in San Pedro. And the school calls up and says, Hey, Mike can't read. Well, if you can't read, she gets a strap up and beats the shit out of me. <laughs> And she, and she, you know, the, the next day I go to school and there's this kid reading real good, you know, and I'm thinking, jeez, I was scared to go home and said, how many ass weapons they got to get before I can read like that, you know? Jeez. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting older now, you know. Uh, once you hit 40, you know, they start, doctor tell you to get that colonostomy, you know. Well, that's a fun experience, you know. i tell you, you know. And it's not that what they do to you, you know, you know, that tube that goes up your you know, it's not, not that they did that, but, you know, after it's over, after it's over, I'm in the room, and you know, it fills you up full of gas, and here's all these real nice looking nurses, and I'm in there going, oh. <laughs> you know, and the nurse finally says, did you pass gas yet? I said, no, I didn't. She goes, well, you can't leave until you do. I said, well, I wish you would have told me an hour ago. I said, <laughs> Uh, I get this ovation from all these uh, nurses that have like, wow. Oh, you know, hey, you know, my kind of women, you know, uh, uh, good looking girls, they got a great job, you know, uh, and, and I can fart in front of them, you know, wow, you know, this is great. You know. Anyway, uh, I'll make sure I'm <laughs> Don't you know these Viagra commercials, man? These, these things that, you know, you watch these Viagra shows and as you're getting older you see it. You know, if you have an erection for four hours, call your doctor. So, yeah, what am I going to say to him? You know, hey, doc, this is great shit. Thank you. <laughs> hey, thank you very much, you guys. How's everybody doing today? Yeah. <laughs> I gotta get a little comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> They told me I had an hour, so I gotta kill some time. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, yeah, um, I just want to thank you guys for coming out here, you know, and supporting us, you know, it's awesome. And um, I know you guys could be somewhere else, you know, you guys could be like at a concert, you know, or you know, going to like another comic show, but you know, it's awesome. Well, um, talk about, you know, bands. Have you guys heard about what happened to, um, to the lead singer of um, the, the Foo Fighters? How he got hurt while he was performing on stage. He went backstage. He got he got healed up, he got his leg, you know, patched up. And then he still finished the show. Man, I don't know. I don't know if I could do that, because I'm so unmotivated that I wasn't gonna make it here tonight because I didn't know what I had to choose. Man, well I chose this one because man, this one glows in the dark, so just in case the lights go out, you know, just follow me, follow the follow the green light and how we go? <laughs> so yeah, man. I, mean, I have the worst qualities, man. Like I'm, on top of being unmotivated, I'm also lazy, man. I'm I'm so, I'm so lazy. I'm thinking of going through chemo just out of the show. But that, you know what the messed up part about that is? You have to get. We have to have cancer to fucking do it. Like, what kind of shit is that? You know, so now I have to be hanging it by power plants just like a cancer just so I don't have to shave anymore. <laughs> yeah, have you ever um have you ever seen somebody like as soon as you see them, you know you don't fucking like their face? <laughs> Like, I don't fucking like your face. <laughs> this person could be the nicest person in the world. Like, the nicest, like, this person, you put on Facebook, man, I need to ride to the airport. This person be the person to take you to the airport at one o'clock in the morning. But you still don't fucking like their face. <laughs> so, you know, like, this person could give you a compliment, like, oh my God, I love your shoes. And inside you're like, man, fuck my shoes. I just wanna fucking rip my shoes off and burn them. You know, I'd rather walk through a pile of coal into a bunch of razor blades and dive into a dive into a pool full of lemon juice than wear these fucking shoes. But you know what? These are pretty, you know, these are some pretty nice shoes, you know. <laughs> They're nice. They, they go with everything I wear. So. Um, yeah, like, I don't know. Have you noticed that girls get mad over the dumbest things these days? <laughs> let me finish. Let me finish. Girls get mad over the dumbest things, all right? So, you know, just make, they all get mad. Dumb, fellas, they all get mad. Um, man, they get mad over the dumbest things. Like, just the other day, I was at the grocery store, you know? And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do something nice today. I'm gonna give my girl, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give my girl something to drink. So I, I went to the soda section and I got her something, you know? And I'm like, hey babe, look, look what I got you. I got, some, I got you something to drink. And she's like, who the fuck is Marissa? <laughs> I was like, what? Who the fuck is this Marissa bitch? Like, hold on, what are you talking about? Right here, look, it says Marissa. You know those personalized coaches? It says Marissa. It's like, babe, look, look, look. I just went and I, I just got a soda, you know, I'm sorry. Look, look. Here, you, you can have mine. So you think I'm crazy now? Say, what? So you think I'm fucking crazy now? What are you talking about? So you think I should see a fucking doctor, Dr. Pepper? <laughs> hey, look, that's the one I got for me. You know what, look, here's my water bottle. But hold on, let me rip the tag off so you don't think I'm fucking not going too. <laughs> So 
<laughs> yeah, me. I don't know. I don't know why people aren't honest with them. Like when they go buy mattresses, like they go ask, like they ask the dumbest questions, like, "Oh, how long is this warranty?" Or, "Oh, how long do you think my bed will last?" Or, "You think my kids will go through it real quick?" You know what? All you guys want to know is, how hard can I fuck on this bed? <laughs> like. I, I'm into some kicky shit, like I do some WWE shit on there, you know, like I throw myself like that, you know? Or like, or like, would it have that push I need, you know, like that, uh, uh, you know what I'm going with? You know? But like, have you seen this commercial for Tempur-Pedic? Or like they have the couple jumping on the bed? And like, and the, there's a glass of wine on the corner? Like, they need, they need a commercial for guys like me. You know, like, do you need a commercial with the uh, with the pile of clothes on the on the edge of the bed and somebody jumping, you know? Cause my mom my mom hates hates having to fold the clothes back again, you know. <laughs> Thank you, got a little bit late, right? Like the mantra chance. It's alright, I'll slow down. <laughs> So I had this ex-girlfriend, right? And she had a cousin. And she would stay over sometimes, you know? And she would make me she, she would make me question my sexuality because she was a transsexual, but because sometimes she would give me this massage and I would get a boner. But but honest I just like massages, that's all, you know. Yeah, but I mean she would give me this like this bomb ass massage, like this three point massage. I don't know how she did it, but it's, to this day, it's the best massage I've ever had. She would massage my back, my, my shoulders, and my lower back all at the same time. <laughs> now, now that I think of it, now I see why, why my back was always sticky at the end. I would, well, well, I have to go now because I got to go to the side real quick. Our next performer is local to San Pedro. Give her a nice round of applause, Miriam Mintz. moment, that moment where you think, gee, I better write this down because a life lesson's coming my direction. <laughs> well, I've had one, a couple, actually. Uh, my bat mitzvah was a rite of passage to womanhood. At 13, you're allowed to be a slut. <laughs> when I lost my virginity, but I really don't want to talk about that. <laughs> my 50th birthday. I went to bed 49, I woke up 50, and I looked like, I felt like I got hit by a Mack truck. I mean, I looked like I got hit with, hit with a 40 pound bag of ugly. I mean, my face was down three inches, I looked like a fucking bowl. <laughs> I mean, excuse me. I mean, what is it? I mean, does the aging fairy come alone and say, Okay, you're 49 years old, that's it, you live, now you're 50, you have all day to look forward to is the pens. It's okay. <laughs> my biggest lesson of all so far was my stroke. And as a result of that, now I suffer from a disorder called PBA. Has anybody seen the commercial with Danny Glover? Yes, no, maybe so, yes, no. Okay, anyways, um, let me try to pronounce it. It's called Pseudo Barbel Effect. And basically it's, uh, sorry, I got my notes. And basically it's when I'm feeling happy, I cry hysterically. And when I'm feeling sad or nervous like now, 
I laugh and can jump. <laughs> so you can see where this disorder uh, might be a problem for some. I mean, it's really tragic because I hurt so many people. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's kind of funny. Okay, so for example, I'm Jewish. That was supposed to be a joke. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But every Passover, my family and I would watch the Ten Commandments. Remember when the Jews were being persecuted, persecuted by the Pharaoh? I giggled. I giggled. <laughs> so I bought one, right? So I put it on my side. I was feeling good. I pushed up. I push down, I push up, I push down, up, down, up. Hey, don't knock it, it's the most stuck I had in five years. <laughs> so, one night, I was sleeping, and I was awoken by this loud crash. And I tried to lift my head to see what was going on, but I really couldn't see anything. So I lay back down, and then I heard uh, moaning and groaning and thrashing around and I was like what the hell so I tried to get out of bed not on my watch right so the minute I stepped out of bed I fell because I forgot I couldn't walk so here I am on the ground army crawl style right and I crawled and I looked in the hallway for anybody no intruders, and I went on to my mom and dad's room. Dun, 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 dun. I punched the wall, I punched the door open, and there it was. My mother was writing my father. She looked at me, I looked at her. She turned to my father and slapped him. Cal, Cal, are you all right? One and two and three and four and breathe, breathe. Jesus Father Mucker. <laughs> my new my neurons and electric electricity lights were crashing. It was just like I didn't know what was going on. So my mom creams in I mean no screams in excitement, dismounts my father and says, Honey, you spoke. And the whole time I'm just thinking, note to John Hopkins, to who it may concern. Instant speech recovery. Show mom and dad stooping. <laughs> Note to self, get psychotherapy, ASAP. <laughs> so, what I'd like to really say in all sincerity, ladies and gentlemen, my mother and father, my speech recovery team, and uh, in their unkosher ways, but it worked. Mother and father, take a stand. I can't see you because I like. <laughs> so, I really like to thank them because if it wasn't for them, I will be up here marking off the checklist of my bucket list. Thank you very much for your time. So nice round of applause, Mr. Rowland. You're probably wondering why I've gathered you all here today. <laughs> the reason is I just turned 85. Anybody over 85? There's good news and bad news. The good news is I'm 85 and I'm still alive, I hope. The bad news is 50% of all people 85 and over have Alzheimer's disease. So I'm a little worried about that. Are there, by the way, being 85, is there anyone here who knows CPR? You do? Okay, you can give me mouth to mouth. <laughs> Anyway, the first sign of Alzheimer's is, uh, has something to do with memory, but I forgot what it was. <laughs> the second sign of Alzheimer's is when you start repeating yourself. The second sign of Alzheimer's is when you start repeating yourself. The second sign of Alzheimer's is when you start repeating yourself. Now, when, if I get Alzheimer's, I'm going to start boxing because if you get hit in the head, it doesn't mean anything, right? You've already got my name, Kid Dementia. Everybody know what dementia means? I don't. 
Anyway, I'm a radiologist and I glow in the dark. Okay. Well, that's, that's, that's just a joke. I really don't glow in the dark, but I might. Anyway, uh, I've done radiology for 50 years, and uh, my wife uh, thinks I'm radioactive, so she won't sleep with me anymore. But I am uh, sexually active. The other day I saw a press student, I went up to her and I said, I don't know, what do you say to these people? Let's fuck? I mean... I, I can really can't say that, so I said, let's I use a different term. Uh, you, I said, let's frack. You know what fracking is? Going for oil? Anyway, she says, how old are you? I said, I'm 85. She said, 85? She said, you've had it. I said, how much do I owe you? <laughs> Anyone, I want to show you something. It's some uh, people might be a little uh, old and they want to look younger. I have a, uh, a plan. I can make people look 30 years younger in five seconds. Start counting. We've all been looking at the debates for a Republican uh, candidate. I'm going to enter the race because I want to get lost in the crowd. I'm going to be number 18. But there's really only one guy you got to compete against, and that's Donald Trump. And uh, what I'm going to do is challenge him to a fight. I think I'm in better shape than him. Come on. Now, in order to, uh, to be a uh, presidential candidate, you have to have some qualities. My qualities are I'm trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. And uh, for the sake of transparency, I'm going to tell you all about my diseases. I have sarcoidosis, S, histiocytosis X, H, idiopathic interstitial fibrosis, I, tuberous sclerosis, T, fungus, F, amyloidosis, A, Collagen vascular disease, C. Eosinophilic granulosis, E. And thus, D. And that spells out shit faced. That's how I know it. <laughs> anyway, I want to show you some of the uh, industries I'm, uh, I'm, I'm starting so I can make some money to support my own campaign. <laughs> This is my first product. I invented this myself. You know, every, everybody talks about gluten. They even use it like in automobiles. This, this uh, Mercedes is gluten-free. <laughs> anyway, I invented a product called gluten-free gluten. Okay? And I sell it in an empty box. This is nothing, nothing to it. I also have a, two other products called fat-free fat and sugar-free sugar. And they also come in empty boxes. <laughs> Now this is one of my best products. It's a wine. And the best name for this, I thought of the best name for a wine, it's called Responsibly, okay? So all the liquor companies are gonna advertise for me free of charge. Drink responsibly. <laughs> now say you get a DUI, say, hey judge, how can I get a DUI? Drink responsibly. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I was speaking to an Irish guy and he was telling me how great drinking is in Ireland. And uh, he says if you drink two beers, you get the third one free. If you drink two whiskeys, you get the third one free. I said, hell, that's nothing. You know, there's a bar in a hotel in uh, Los Angeles. You can drink all night long and when you get drunk, they bring you upstairs and you get laid. And it's all free of charge. And he says, this happened to you? I said, no, but it happens to my sister all the time.
here's my second product. It's an olive oil. Now, uh, most olive oils are virgin and extra virgin. But how do people know if an olive is a virgin or what is extra virgin anyway? So I came up with a new product. I've been watching olives, and a lot of these olives are faking it. They're not virgin. <laughs> How about the naughty olives? I came up with a product called Extra Slutty Olive Oil. <laughs> and it's a school for uh, driving, okay? But it's a school for driving, drunk, and texting at the same time. <laughs> because if you know how to, you know, if you, if you take lessons on how to drive when you're drunk and you're texting, you're going to learn how to do it pretty well. You can focus. But if you just do it every while, every once in a while, you're going to, you know, get in a lot of trouble, kill people. So, you know, this is a 10-week course, and <laughs> after you're finished, you're able to drive, text, and drink at the same time. <laughs> My last uh, business is, uh, a, did everybody see the funeral of Kim Jong-il, the Korean president who died? Remember how they... All the Koreans were crying and crying. So I started a Korean mortuary, and uh, I hired seven Cor North Koreans to uh, cry at your funeral. And the motto of our, of our company is, your funeral will be more interesting than your life. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Give him a nice round of applause, comedian Rodney Richardson. Good evening, evening. Gosh, you'd think nerves out, so you have to excuse me here a bit. Uh, ooh, it's a hot day today. I hung out at Target today. It was something I didn't You okay? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Military spray is kicking in. I'm like, hey, you're old. Oh, red alert. Cold three. Cold three. All right. We're going to work this mic, all right? We're going to work this mic, all right? <laughs> like I was saying, I was hanging out at Target today, and you notice, anybody ever walk down the aisles and you know the cougar lights will come on automatically now? Anybody know, thank you. Anybody know the, the cooler lights will come on automatically yeah. on their own when you walk down the aisle? I thought that was pretty cool, because they also have some music going on there, which is something I never really heard at one time. So I just had that urge to like do some runway walking when the lights came on, right? So I heard this music going. So I was watching the hot wings and the bag of green beans as I was walking down the aisle. I had fun, I don't know about y'all. It was cool, I made make the best of my time at Target. All right. All you marijuana smokers, you heard about Washington and Oregon had legalized recreational marijuana use. Wow. <laughs> All right. Uh, obviously, we don't have any marijuana users in here, right? No. Well, let me tell you what I think is going on here. It's a conspiracy, I tell you, to get the African-American people out of the state of California. Yeah, that's not. That, that's terrible. So anyways, as I was packing all my stuff, about to get on the 405, right? <laughs> all right. The election season is coming up. Everybody got who they're going to vote for? Everybody got all the issues resolved, right? Everybody ready to vote? Well, it's going to be a little challenging this time, right? So we, gotta, we really got to do our homework, right? We got to know about the issues, environmental issues, uh, jobs, education, uh, what's the best toilet paper to use, and stuff like that, right? All right, because the last, let's face it, the last two years, it was pretty easy to figure out who we wanted to vote for, right? Come on, be honest, either black or white, right? <laughs> hey, let's face it, all right? So this time, we gotta do our homework. We gotta, we gotta figure out what we gonna learn, what we gonna do, who we gonna have represent us. Okay. Not that one. <laughs> yeah, let's go with that one. Uh, one of the issues was um, 
interrogation. Anybody know about the CIA interrogation, water, waterboarding? Anybody heard that term? I thought it was something cool personally. I thought it was like some type of surfing event or something. But apparently it's not. It's very terrible. It's what they do when they interrogate the prisoners. You know, they, they use like, uh, anybody watch 24? Anybody watch Jack Bauer? Anybody see him in action? That's the kind of stuff they get. Jack Bauer don't care about nobody, foreign or domestic. You all seen him in action, right? No, we gotta get the answers. We gotta do this for the national security. It's for the best of the country. And they doing all this in LA. That's what tripped me out the first couple of seasons. But anyway, I think they should you know, kind of tone it down, right? Because that's some of the issues gonna be about. Check out, listen for it, tone it down. I think what they need to do is get somebody like Mike Tyson in there, right? Time to a cheer, and Mike come in there and they just have Mike sing them nursery rhymes like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, Old McDonald Out of Farm, until they just like tell them anything they know, right? Please no marks or anything. Mike psychologically messed them up, but I think they'll be alright. Alright. Let's Sorry, it's a little, it's been a little, I've been a little dehydrated today. Um, <clears throat> the uh, perception. Everybody know perception plays a role in everything that we do, our daily lives and everything, right? Right? So much, right? Yeah. We don't do marijuana, we don't have perception. Come on, y'all, work with me. <laughs> want to talk about something that's near and dear to me. Let's, I want to, you know, I, I, you know, it's about the, the law enforcement reputation with customer service, right? <laughs> Let's call it that, customer service. I think they need to work on a better image for themselves. They got a kind of bad reputation, right, of what they've been doing, right? The batoning, the kicking, the tasering, they elevated up to shooting, Right, so what I think they really need to do is share their affinity with donuts with everyone. Don't you agree? I think that would be a really cool campaign, right? So here we go. I'm on the 405, right? Because you know where I'm going. Up north, the great northwest. And I get pulled over, right? And uh, I was probably doing about maybe 15, 25 miles over the speed limit. Is that pretty fast? No. No, what? 35? 45? Can I get 50? No. Y'all know we'd be rolling here in California. But anyhow, I get pulled over. And the officer says, you know why I pulled you over? You know, I'm like, no. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm going to give you a donut. I was like, I'm like, what? I'm like shocked. I mean, come on. This, I mean, you know, I'm like, I'm used to, you know, I'm preparing myself for the worst, right? Don't shoot, you know, ready, ready to raise my hand and all that kind of stuff, right? I'm, I'm trying to prepare everything. So, you know, the, the first thing you do is cut on the dome lights, you know, and everything. I mean, you're going to prepare yourself for this. So I'm just like, okay, you know, I get the donut and everything. He said, have you been drinking? Oh, my God. Damn. You know, I'm like, no, no, I haven't. I haven't. Here's a cup of coffee. I'm like, damn, what? Damn. I'm, I'm really getting like, this is kind of cool, you know, it's not so bad. I'm like, just turn back to California after all. So uh, I'm getting real relaxed and everything. He's like, you know what? I still got to give you a citation. I said, oh man, I knew it was too good to be true. He said, I'm going to give you a gift certificate to Dunkin' Donuts. I'm like, yeah, I hit the jackpot, hit the jackpot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what you do when you like work on your next slide. <laughs> All right. Um. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna close this. As you know, I, I do fitness and everything, and uh, I know I make it sound like just like nothing and everything. Uh, what I want to talk about is three categories of being overweight. That's that's what we probably know about two of them, and it, it's about the body mass index, and it's basically height to weight. So there's two classes that we all know about. The first one is overweight. That's about a BMI of 25. The second one is 30, and then we have a staggering uh, third one. 
it's making me tired of talking about it. It's uh, it's uh, <laughs> 50, and they're and they they're calling that one Java the Hut. All right. So, so if you see anybody walk around, you know that that's that's Java the Hut. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. That's my time. Random car will pick you up wherever you are. They'll take you to wherever you want to go. And you probably won't rape you, because I mean, like, it's legit. <laughs> and, uh, so, like, you can be at a party. It's like an instant evacuation from wherever you are. You could be at a party, and, like, some guy will just be like, huh? What? Yeah, no, no, I'm faded. Yeah. And then I'm just like, oh, I kind of don't really want to talk to you right now. Um, I'm just going to go. And then get in the car and just dip. <laughs> so uh, it's nice to be here, it's nice to have some interaction because I just stay at home usually, watch TV, play video games, and uh, watch porn. <laughs> no, that's a little too frivolous, watching video games and playing TV. <laughs> Messed that one up, but it's cool. Just going in my room, get some of my So uh, I watch a lot of TV. I don't like the three commercials that come on. You know, you got the ASPCA, right? The cat, it'll come on with like its eye closed, like someone just jizzed on its face. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, remember when, oh, I don't know, you probably have a cat, you probably jizzed on its face. <laughs> or uh, they have the smoking commercial, a guy will come on like, I didn't know smoking cigarettes for 35 years would give you a hole in your armpit, but uh, it's not cool. And then you got the uh, starving kids in Africa, right? That one. So I think they should just like combine those three commercials because it'll be nice, right? You'll see it come on and be like, oh, I know they're going to play this one and then the other two so I don't have to be surprised throughout the whole period of uh, watching TV. Like, they should have a kid come on, like a little African kid just come on. Has a cigarette. For just pennies a day. You can help me feed my dog. By the way, have you seen my dog? So I've been single for quite some time now. It's fun. I mean, I'm free. You know, I don't have to worry about anyone else. I'm kidding. I fucking hate it. I mean, there's only so much porn you can watch. Infinite. But it's like the internet. Like, do you think when they were coming up with it, like some guy was just like, you know, this is for porn, right? What? Yeah, this is for porn. Anywhere you go, you'd be able to have porn. Porn right in your pocket. Really? Yeah. But, um, like, how do we get past that? Like, because you know people obviously, like, catch it. He's like, oh, yeah, you know, but um, we'll just create this thing called, uh, we'll just make a word, uh, Google. That'll work. Google. Um, we'll just put, like, useless information out there that people will know, and then they'll be like, oh, I have a reason for that. But it's really important. <laughs> I don't know. I'm more of a, I like dogs. I have three dogs. And I have a couple cats, too. They're out there at source. <laughs> I like dogs, they're kind of nice, but you can't really have anything productive around them. Like, I used to play with bionicles, still do. They're nice, you just click them together real easy, but like, I wanted to do Legos one time. I was just like, I'm gonna do Legos, step up, you know, more complicated. <laughs> so I have my little ship, right, creating it, a little aircraft carrier. This big, a big, bunch of pieces. And then someone lets the dog in. Legos everywhere. Back to bottom, we'll click, 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 click. But cats aren't any better. Like, you'll have stuff on your counter, and they'll like be delicate too, right? They'll just be like, <laughs> they moving around. And then you got a cup right next to the laptop, and their little tail, and I'll just come up. <laughs> Fucking cat. <laughs> and then you let them in the door, and they take like 30 minutes for each individual body to the door. And you're just like, get the fuck is there a litter box in there? Oh no, because you shit everywhere. <laughs> oh, they're cool. Okay. So, uh, my mom the other night, she was like, I don't know if you should do a comedy. You're like, you can't say any bad words. Like, I think they're going to be pretty chill people. It's like, you just don't want me to say cunt. Isn't that what it is? It was. <laughs> so, uh, I had a problem. I, I had a word that I thought meant, like, malarkey or tomfoolery. <laughs> And the word was conolingus. <laughs> and that means something way different. So I was talking to my mom, and uh, she was mad at me. I'm like, why are you mad at me? You're mad because of my conolingus? She goes, what? <laughs> I'm like, what? What's wrong with that? Conolingus, you know, like I was messing around or what? She goes, that's not what that means. I go, what? No, that's what it means. No, that's not what it means. 
All right, so what does it mean? She goes, um, I don't know how to tell you this. Uh, and then my stepdad comes in, oh, um, you know, what's, uh, what's the opposite of getting head? Uh, not getting head? <laughs> is that what it is? Like, no. <laughs> so, uh, it's a pretty cool place, pretty chill. I feel your vibes. Not so much over here. <laughs> not as cool as games the room. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, watching porn's nice. I wouldn't want to do it with other people, that would be kind of weird. Anyone interested? Give it a try. Why not? So, uh, I'm 18, pretty young. One of my friends, he was like, dude, we should just be fucking everything, dude. I don't know what we're doing. And he downloads this app on my phone. And I'm like, I don't think this app's gonna work at all. And he goes, no, it works. No, it works. I was like, have you gotten laid on it? He goes, no. I was like, well, I have something on my phone that works every time. Porn. Say answer. Say answer. Yeah, so, uh, I don't know, I have cotton mouth right now. <laughs> I'm not stoned or anything, I just like having a dry mouth. Alright, that's my time, everybody. Wasn't my son great? Isn't that totally my son? Zero to hundred, real quick, real quick, real quick. Zero to hundred. So, San Pedro. I love San Pedro. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, San Pedro is doing a lot of improvements. We've got the USS Iowa. We've got that bar that's being built. And on Gaffey, they've got a Domino's Pizza that's now Domino's. <laughs> because now they have more shitty food that's gonna give you diabetes. <laughs> so I started meditation because I've got this little voice in the back of my head. I call it my wife. <laughs> And that's the only joke I was allowed to say. <laughs> um, so I've been married six years, and I love my wife, and I respect her. There's the brownie points, there's the brownie points. Keep it safe. But I want more blowjobs. More BJs. I want more BJs. Uh, all married men want more BJs. And as you get Longer in marriage, you want more, and you get less. What's up with that? That's not cool at all. And here's the problem. BJ, blowjob. I had a blowjob, and it was magical. When you're a young kid, you're like, I just got a dick sucked. It was amazing. And now we're like, marriage, blowjob. Blowjob, marriage. Take the job out of it. Why is it gotta be a job? We gotta change it, we gotta change it. Blovana. <laughs> Honey, come here and give me some Blovana. It will be wonderful. <laughs> so I'm creepy. <laughs> and a little bit of a pervert, but that's why we got married. Be creepy get away with it sometimes. So my wife's reading a book. I grab her booby. My wife is in the kitchen. I grab her butt. My wife's in the shower. I just stare at her for a Till she starts crying. Love marriage. Marriage is great. Love marriage. I'm like an awkward combination of Casey Affleck and Jared from Subway. Too creepy? Too creepy. Too creepy. I'm sorry. Too creepy. So, um, I wrote a joke joke. It's funny John talked about joke jokes. I wrote a joke joke. My joke joke is all about equal rights in gay marriage. We've had a really good summer and I'm all about equal rights. So here's my joke. <laughs> 
joke. You know how your dog's gay? <laughs> this time, I didn't even need to use peanut butter. Boom! <laughs> joke joke. There you, go, there you go. So, since it's the end of the show, I guess we gotta like not have a long set, so I think I did a relatively good job, so I'm just gonna place my microphone gently on the ground. And pick it up. Thank you very much. One of the things I like to do now is watch reality TV. My favorite show is the Kardashians. Kim, Chloe, Chris, Cookie, Caitlin. But the thing about these girls, they're nice girls. But they got big butts. And they like black ass. That's a formula for these ass. No, it's a formula for these ass. Remember Lamar Odom? Used to play for the Lakers? Yeah. Six men of the year. Two time NBA champion. Married one of those Kardashians. Uh, start having bad luck. <laughs> hmm. the, the thing about what the, the people don't know about them is, those girls are gypsies. <laughs> <laughs> putting spells on these brothers. <laughs> okay, Lamar, he was doing good. Then he got, tra he got traded to Dallas. Now, he traded a brother from L.A that was born in New York to Dallas, we got a heart. <laughs> now Lamar is smoking crack. <laughs> okay, you go to Dallas. See how long you last before you think about it. <laughs> now Lamar is out to be. Now Kim, she's, she's, she's done about five or six months. So I'm just going to tell about a couple of <laughs> You remember Chris Humphrey, 15 points a game, 8 rebounds, used to play for uh, the Nets, New Jersey, Mount Brooklyn. Stayed married to Kim for 72 days. <laughs> now he's out the league. <laughs> he, he's still playing basketball. He's in the Chinese league. <laughs> Good luck finding the big ass in China. <laughs> it's hard. He had to get a six pack to replace Kim. <laughs> so the next guy that she, she ran into was uh, Miles Austin. A lot of you football fans remember him. Two, two time Pro Bowl player, a receiver. Catch every pass they throw to. Start dating Kim, he couldn't catch a damn thing. <laughs> Out the lead. <laughs> Working for FedEx. <laughs> he's in shipping and receiving. <laughs> he, he's catching boxes. Hmm. Now, there was only one person that got away from Kim, and that was Reggie Bush. Because Reggie called his mother. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Reggie was playing for New Orleans. Reggie's mother went to Lafayette, met this voodoo lady, Miss Ophelia. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Ophelia put a spell on Kim. Every time she get close to Reggie, her ass just starts shrinking. <laughs> you know that one's gonna work out. <laughs> now, I'm gonna tell you, everything I say about these Cardassians is true. Remember Bruce Jenner? <laughs> World's greatest athlete. The brother could run, throw, and jump. Messed around with these gypsies for too long. <laughs> now, now he just hops, skips, and shots. <laughs> brother got a problem. 
saying is, Kanye, you better watch it. <laughs> I recently got an invitation. I had to go back to Texas. Didn't want to go. If you ever been there, you know why. <laughs> but we fly into Texas. Rent a car. As soon as I turn onto the highway, a big sign. Don't mess with Texas. Now my wife is scared. What the hell is that? <laughs> hell, I don't know. I haven't been here in 25 years. Don't mess with it. I don't know. As <laughs> soon, as, soon as we get on the freeway, you know the big, big digital sign they have on the Harbor Freeway? Yeah. 10 miles of downtown. They had theirs up there says, had an execution announcement. Billy Bob was executed in Huntsville today. <laughs> Now, if you know anything about Huntsville, Texas, you could Google this. Since 1850, they've executed about 10,000 people. Killed more people than died in Iraq. So, also on the, on the big board, they, they got uh, Billy Bob's last meal. He, he ordered two Whataburgers, a double Whataburger. A two-piece from Popeyes <laughs> and some waffles. Now, most respectable states, when they get ready to execute somebody, they get a chef. You know what you want? Steak, lobster, martini. No, Texas. They just send a guard to the drive-thru. <laughs> Bring him something, anything, man. <laughs> Hell, we hear all this stuff, so we're hungry. I put into the Waffle House, pick up a newspaper, order some waffles. On the front page, this is the truth. The preseason execution schedule. Oh, yeah. Now, they just did Billy Bob. Tuesday, they were doing Billy Ray. Thursday, they did Billy Joe. Friday, they did Billy Earl. And Saturday, they did Billy Paul. My wife saw this, she said, they killed Billy Paul? I said, shit, you know. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> you know Miss Jones lived in Houston anyway. She should have been messing around. <laughs> well, I want to thank you all for coming out. I think that's it for me. Catch me in a couple of